And we're back. With a little bit more oxygen not included on our 141 attempt. We're currently at 107 plus, I think we've got four in rockets right now. So they were actually more like 111. Yeah, every time they get into rockets, they don't show up here anymore, which makes things a little confusing. As you can see, everything's quite active. Everyone's busy. I've queued up a bunch of power wires in the background just to, to replace our old power grid. So, yeah, everything's getting swapped out for, say, gold. There's a chunk over here being done, like, all of this is getting swapped out for gold or lead in some way. There's a bunch of this going on all over the map. But, for today, the plan, to start anyway, we want to put in another mini base. Now, the thing is, we're limited on space. People were saying I should maybe throw one in over here, but I'd prefer to keep it as close to the transportation grid as possible. Plus, you know, things are nice when they look neat. So what I was thinking was, we simply put one opposite to this, like have them mirror each other, which would look amazing, though we would have to move this. So I'm thinking we grab this blueprint, we just throw it over here somewhere, run it through the coal biome as normal, and then we place in our little mini base right across here parallel to it. It'll require a little bit of moving things about, but we have so much dupe power right now, it shouldn't take too long. But first, we'll just let them finish off what they're up to, and I think we're going to be hiring another dupe in a minute. First, we'll just get this area prepped nice and quickly. We want to clean most of this area out so we can build the thing we're just plopping down the blueprint. I've used the blueprint tool to, well, grab a copy of the one we currently have down. Ooh, ooh, it's a bit slow. To grab a copy of this one, we are literally just going to plop it down right like there. Right there. And we'll maybe have to cancel a few bits and bobs so people can gain access or our duplicates can gain access. But in the meantime, quick deconstruction job of all these ladders. We're putting in some uh, accessibility ladders to make the deconstruction simpler. A quick hiring of our newest dupe, which will be Niven. Uh, I believe that means to rub, according to some old monastic languages. But uh, this is actually an interesting one. Plus three strength, plus three strength for tidying and supplying. Night owl, uncultured and no taste, all of which will give massive morale boosts. They can't build, but they will be able to tidy like crazy and they'll be super happy while doing it. We now get the joy of putting in our new blueprint, which we're going to stick right there. I think that looks perfect. However, for it to work correctly, we're going to have to leave some access points so people can get in and out. So if we just say leave a few holes here and there, like that, everyone should be able to get in at least on one side. And you know what? We will do the same on both sides here. Once we've done all of that though, one thing that always comes up is these manual airlocks. People say they're not necessary, I can get rid of them. They're, these things are sort of vestigial. It used to be there was uh, bricks across here, all the way across there, and there was no way to get through because there was only a one-tile gap. But currently, dupes can hop over that. There's a two-tile gap up here, so they can hop over it. It's just out of habit, I always use the doors, and it looks wrong when I remove them. But because people keep mentioning it, we're going to replace these with just insulated tiles. They don't even have to be insulated, but we're going to do it. Just, just so. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll get that started and then we'll uh, we'll start this build. While this gets built though, we do have something fun that has happened. Our car first cargo has come back and it's got niobium. We've only got about, what, 24 kilos in each? But that's enough that we're going to be able to turn all our mm, tungsten into thermium. Which, yes, yes, and more yes. We'll just empty that storage out and we'll go in there, down and start getting that built in our industrial, industrial brick down here. All right, what we can do is we can go... Oh, actually, wait, no, I've queued up a bunch of iron there. Ah, wolf from right to tungsten. I still have that queued up? Damn, I must... I have these things... We've been having these things run pretty much constantly. Uh, where is... I had briefly forgotten we needed a molecular forge to make this stuff, so we'll just, well, tack it on here at the side. This whole area has been kept nice and cool by our cooling loop, so it's not like it's a big deal. Also, we... Uh, a long time ago, we threw in a bunch of these batteries, though I think we uh, suppress current notifications... Yeah, we're going to get rid of those. They hopefully will help with frame rate, and at the same time, it just gets rid of those annoying flashing signs. Eh, once that's done, we'll start our thermium. These things take an incredibly long time to build. And when I say a long time, let's have a quick look back on our oxygen production. It seems to be, yeah, building rather quickly. We've even thrown in a bunch of the gas pipes. We're going to have to demolish some ice. We're going to have to dig it out. It's unfortunate, but it's the only way to get this done quickly. And we sort of want it done quickly. We want that second base in soon because, well, the dupes are never going to stop coming. But yes, let's go back and see how this is doing. Nope, nope, still going. In fact, this is the third person to attempt building it. All the rest had to go off and, you know, use the bathroom or something because they got exhausted from doing it. What's your skills? You have zero in construction. That's, uh, yep, that's super helpful. And we finally get it built by our, I can't remember if this is the fourth or fifth person to do it, but uh, good job, Paul. Good job. 
All right, Thermium, finally, we will do you forever. There is no point having Tungsten for... Well, there's almost no point keeping Tungsten, so I don't bother. Thermium is just far better in every single respect. So we'll churn out a bunch of that, and that will be the start of Space Materials. Now, where were we? Ah, yes, we had to finish off... We have to finish off our oxygen production, uh, our new oxygen production. As we plow through this, there's one more thing we have to do, again, and that is hire another duplicate. Say hello to Adam Overton. At some point, they've got a suit-wearing ability, so we'll get him into rocketry. So we're going to have a narcoleptic rocket pilot. That can obviously only go well. I wonder if they should really introduce a negative for having a, a narcoleptic rocket pilot, because I imagine that's just got to be a real no-no in a lot of circles. Ooh, 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 another problem we face. Uh, eggs. We've actually got more eggs than we need in here now. We've gone up to 93. Now, uh, there's been a few questions as to why we're counting the eggs and why not just look in here. Well, it's to do with... Well, if we check now, there's supposed to be 92 eggs in here, I think. Or 92, but it's actually 117. What's happened is some of these critters have laid eggs, and because they have laid eggs... Yeah, it's got all things confused. We just want exactly about 90 in there uh, of just one life cycle, but the moment they start dropping eggs but they're still alive, it starts confusing the count. So instead, we just use a counter to make sure we put in the right amount. Right now, though, we're going to run an extra... We're going to build another little mm, shovel farm over here. This will be our next... This should, if I've counted it out right, be where our next one will be when we install our, uh, our, another, our new mini base over here. And we're going to start dumping the excess shovel eggs from here in there. And by the time this is... Well, by the time there's 90 eggs in there, we should definitely have the whole mini base finished. Uh, yeah, yeah. This, this should only take a few seconds. But uh, we still have to finish this as well also. Right, this is just about ready to be fired up. This has all been reset, and now all the new eggs... Actually, here comes an egg right now. All the new eggs are going to be fired down here and go over to our newest ranch. This one ended up with about 95 eggs in it, which was well over... We only needed 76, 78, I think, but we overbuilt just in case. A little bit of overkill never hurt anybody. This over here is almost ready to be completed. We just got to stick in a few walls. There and there. Water is just about prepped. Yeah, we should be golden. It's now about time to fire this up, but we're going to fire it up slightly different than normal. Uh, the reason being, I designed this to be fired up so that you could just turn it on, and so long as you let it run, it would eventually even out all the gas pressures on the inside. However, there's always suggestions of how you can do this differently, and usually the simplest one... Uh, well, I try and avoid doing anything too complicated just to make things as simple as possible, but usually the one everyone tells you to do is turn off the top gas pump until you get a bit of hydrogen pressure, and it's usually one of the faster things to do. Now, for the time being, though, we're just going to turn on the bottom gas pumps and have them pump out all the gunk that's in there. Uh, this one, however, is going to have a bit of a problem. There's no, uh, there's no gas output for this. It's just built through ladders constantly. Actually, wait. Yeah, there's a ladder right there. You know what? If we just delete that ladder segment we could probably replace it with one of those high-pressure gas vents. That might be an idea. But while we're looking in there, gas pressure has dropped an enormous amount, which is exactly what we wanted. Then we grab this and we hook up the water. Uh, right there and right there. Boom, water starts flowing in. Now we should start getting oxygen pressure and we should start getting uh, hydrogen produced as well. Ooh, ooh, bit chuggish, bit chuggish. And then we'll start to see hydrogen take up the top slot. In case you're wondering, we have plugged this into our main power spine. We've run a big power cable right across the top. So that's plugged into, well, we're basically running on coal still. We have so many hatches and so much coal produced. We're, we're burning the coal as fast as we're producing it though. So we're going to have to start adding petroleum into our mix as well. And maybe tap into those natural gas vents. But not until we're finished this new microbase. And, well, uh, this oxygen is running. How are we looking there? Eh, not enough hydrogen in that bottom one just yet, but soon enough, soon enough. Now you will notice the entire top layer is pretty, well, not quite here, but it's close to being exactly where we want it. So we'll just change this to above 250. Copy that to over there. And now those two gas pumps should start activating and it should start sucking out this carbon dioxide at the bottom, which should hopefully get replaced with pure hydrogen. The top one has already stabilized, which is great. Bottom one, okay, maybe I should have run that a little bit longer, but it's close, it's close. Uh, all of that hydrogen, though, is immediately just getting dumped out this gas vent. We don't even want that contaminating the system. We're just going to keep running this until it's all run clean. And would you look at that? It's all perfectly pristine. In which case, we can grab this here, hook that up, and hook that up. There might be a little bit of gunk in there. See, there's a little bit of carbon dioxide in there. But from now on, all that hydrogen will get siphoned out this side and get dumped into our hydrogen generators. All of those hydrogen generators will start providing the power for this so we can disconnect the main power spine. At the same time, all the excess overflow 
Oh, one second. Is going to end up getting sent down here eventually. Not straight away. It'll be a while until the backup in the system happens. But all of that will get sent into these gas tanks, and these gas tanks will be burnt off. Any excess hydrogen will be burnt off in these. However, unlike last time, we are going to take advantage of this excess power. So we're just going to grab one of these power areas here, and we're going to plug this into the main power spine. Oop, there you go. So that will plug right back into our main power spine. So all that excess hydrogen will help power our grid now. Well, it will once we get a backup. It's going to be a long time before there's enough hydrogen in there. It, this over here needs to start looking more like this over here. But that will be a little bit from now. Uh, let me get this oxygen plugged into the main system so we can start demolishing the old one. All right, the oxygen is finally flowing freely. Hydrogen's a little bit behind, but we can sort that out later. That is beautiful. We're going to have a little bit of a gap in the flow while it all kicks in. And there's a bunch of vestigial pipes we'll have to delete, but that is fine by me. You know what? We might want to take all of this excess hydrogen and dump it into our upstairs system up here. Might be a good way to get rid of a lot of it. A quick stop along the way for our newest duplicant, Elisa Azarius. Uh, cooking and farming, I think, though, we'll be putting them straight into more cooking. We can always do with more additional cooks. Now, hydrogen is finally beginning to drain out of here. That is being sent up here into the reserves tanks. We're having a little bit of problem getting a backup on the hydrogen because, well, it's plugged into the main grid and it keeps drawing all the power out of it. So we've turned off a few of the hydrogen generators to be sneaky so we can run on the main grid for a bit. And then we are going to disconnect this and start on our micro base finally. This is taking a lot longer than I thought it would. We are just about finished with this. I'm going to seal it up and be done with it, though it's getting, it's getting kind of toasty over there. Yep, already getting toasty that side. It's fine, it's fine. Once it's gone through here, comes out the other side, everything is coming out nice and chill. What's the temperature look like? Yeah, icy cold, exactly what we wanted. This area is a bit warm, but once we put in our new little micro base, we can cool it down. At the same point, this has got to go, this entire ice biome. It's unfortunate, but mm, we have uh, set up some ice collection points over here, a bunch of smart storage. They're made out of metal, so any ice that gets put in there usually melts pretty quickly. In fact, how did that ice do? Oh, it's gone already. Yeah, the thermal conductivity on the smart storage is much better. That's why I use them. And it just means it melts faster. But this, this all has to go, unfortunately. Normally, I wouldn't demolish ice like this, but we sort of need the space and we need to get our duplicates into another little base before, uh, before our auction becomes a problem again. With the ice biome gone, we now have enough room to throw in our mm, micro base problem is we just want to strip out a few of the ladder segments here and make sure this is a nice open area. Oh, and did we empty out all the piping? Yes, we did. Perfect. In fact, did I maybe forget about that piping for a little bit too long? No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Also, we should hook that back up again. That is, that is our toilet water outflow, so it's a good thing I didn't let that accidentally back up too much. No, no, that, that all worked out. Perfect. Oh, what are you doing, guys? That way? Yes, there we go. God, everything is so slow. Even on the slowest speed, it's impossible to scroll very quickly. I believe there's a mod for that, but uh, eh, we'll leave it for the time being. It's kind of nice to know just how painful the game is finding things. Uh, there we go. This here will be where we're going to throw in our micro base. We're going to throw it in exactly across from there. We'll keep the two parallel. This is going to cause a little bit of an issue, but I think I found a way to work around it. It'll, it'll sort of make our, our hallway here or the top of this a little bit too short. And oh my god, how are you still alive? How did you even escape? Ah, oh, did, hmm, you know what? No, no, I could, I could wrangle you up. I could do a bunch of things, but I think I just want the food. <laughs> Someone will get around to you eventually. Uh, let's, uh, let's start on our next section here, which will be micro base part two. Before we're quite finished on the prep there, we just have to hire another duplicate because of course we do. We have an anemic with divers lung here. So please say hello to Blastropath. I, I had a choice between a twinkle toes flatulent or diver's lung anemic and uh, had to be the had to be the diver's lung just to save us on that little bit of oxygen. All right, let's uh let's get this started. I need to start building this in so we have a better idea of where everything's going to go. Unfortunately, we can't just grab a blueprint and mirror image it. It just doesn't work that way, unfortunately. So we're just going to have to manually build this whole thing, sort of as a mirror image of this one. It shouldn't be that hard. It'll just take a little bit of time and a lot of placing of a lot of bricks. Right, let's get a nice level. Yep, I think there's a bit the perfect way we should be able to see. We could still put it in the oxygen facility at the back. Currently, a bunch of dupes are taking all of that ice and dumping it somewhere that it won't melt. Well, okay, where it will melt, but will not melt in a place that would annoy us. 
This, of course, is taking far too long, and there's a couple of things we should really be working on that uh, I just haven't gotten around to because I keep getting distracted. Since we've got our cargo modules back and we got ourselves some thermium, oop, 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 we did, uh, we have uh, used the molecular forge to make a bunch of thermium. At the same time, we've run out of niobium to make more. So what we can do is just pop in here and take 100 kilos of thermium and turn it into 100 kilos of niobium. That allows us to run another how many batches? I think it only takes five kilos. Yeah, so it allows us to run 20 more batches. So for 100 kilos, we can make two tons of thermium, assuming we have the tungsten to do it. That's a deal I'll take more to often than not. Now, ooh, ooh, God, that's slow. Anyway, we can pop over here this side and it's time to start vacuuming this area. This carbon dioxide down here is not helping. So, thermium gas pump, so it won't overheat down here. We'll throw in a couple of those. Uh, we're also going to need to have uh, an element sensor. Those two there will detect whether or not there's carbon dioxide in the area. Then we just go in to grab an AND gate. The AND gate here just means that if that one can detect carbon dioxide and that one can detect carbon dioxide, it will tell those gas pumps to turn on. Uh, if we did it any other way, if we just connected them both up, that means if either of them detected carbon dioxide. The reason we want two is we want to make sure that there's actually a big pool of carbon dioxide here to draw on. We don't care if there's carbon dioxide up to about this point. That's fine. We just want to make sure that no steam gets sucked out. And that will all get dumped out here and sent up that line and up into space where it gets dumped out into the vacuum. Uh, though we probably should run some power wires. I didn't run a power wire yet, did I? Mm, damn it. There we go. Power wire will go down there. We'll hook it up to those two gas pumps. That should drain out most of our annoying carbon dioxide problems. However, there are other carbon dioxide problems we need to take care of. Uh, we might remember them from the last time we were dealing with ooh, a rocket chimney. Jesus, the game. <laughs> um, up here. Annoyingly, the carbon dioxide keeps getting sucked in here. I remember dealing with this before. All we do is we get some gas pumps in there and some automation and pretty much the same thing as down below. Very, very simple setup. We've got gas pump here and then right beside it, we've got the element sensor. We're going to set that to detect carbon dioxide. If carbon dioxide is detected, the gas pump turns on and it dumps the gas out here where it gets sucked into the vacuum of space. Otherwise, there's just going to be steam in there. Now, we may grab the odd bit of steam we shouldn't, but that's a price I'm willing to pay. Uh, this is all set to level 6, and the ones in the bottom are set to level 6. Just give us a couple of minutes there, and uh, we'll wait until all of these are good to go. Oh, oh. Ooh, excuse me. The uh, We'll set ourselves back up for a little bit more on this. Of course, the clock is always ticking, so it's been three cycles already. Time for another duplicate. Say hello to duplicate 115, I believe. So we've got... Buoy, B-E-U-Y, Buoy, Boy, oh, we're going with Buoy. Uh, they're going to be athletic, so they're probably going to end up a rocketeer somewhere along the line. Considering the amount of people we're going to, that are going to end up in rockets, it's very likely. Uh, we've we've got the bulk of this done. We just need to put in power and gas piping. Oh, and also, yeah, the cooling solution. We need to put in a steam turbine over there. We are almost good to go on this one. Uh, we've got most. Well, all of this is set up. We have water backed up and ready to go, though I do want to set up a separate alternative water supply for this. Uh, currently, I'm just sort of siphoning off what's already going into this system over here. I want to give it its own pump and its own feed just to make sure it's 100% stable. So for that, we're going to plug into here. This will sort of be our centralized water tank. And this is where we're sort of dumping all of our clean water for now. There was a bunch of ice down here. There still is, and it's slowly but surely going to melt inside these. It'll take... God knows how long. The less you have in there, the faster it will melt, so I should probably maybe spread them out a bit. I'm just kind of lazy. Uh, but let's get this finished. I really want to get this started, but we still need to get this loop filled, and we need to get a bunch of clean water in there to fill off the top layer of that. While we wait for someone to show up with a reasonable amount of water, at the same time we're going to finish our little food, infinite food storage for this section of the base. While we can put in all these weird ladders, that duplicate has to stand there to access it and build in it, so once we put it in this roof across here, that will no longer be possible and no one will be able to get access that anymore. So let's just deconstruct those. And then we're going to stick in some bleach stone in a bit. Well, once we've got power through here, we'll put in some bleach stone, make sure that that uh, all gets filled up, and that will make sure we have nice, clean food, that even if food germs end up on it. Also acts as a sterile environment. So close! But we're running out of time every single minute. So, say hello to our newest duplicate slash patron. It's... Okay, I'm going with Nemanja Marcin. Nemanja pa Marcin? That, that, that's it. Yep, yep. That, that's the one we're going for. Uh, welcome to the team. You'll probably end up in science or rocketry. 
Now that's 113 plus we've got four in rockets. That's 117 duplicates slash patrons that are running around the map right now. Would explain why we can't go above one speed. However, we will shortly be done. So soon, so soon we'll be ready to go. Well, that's not good. Uh, let's let's hope that duplicate was saved. I really don't want to have to pronounce that again. Unfortunately, it wasn't saved. So uh, we we're going to have to hire you again. So you will be marching Nemanja. Uh, you're going to have divers long this time, which actually works out okay for us. So this was not the worst restart, even if it did take about another 20 minutes to get back to this point. Uh, we've almost got most of this replaced and put back in again. Yeah, that was that was a minor setback. Minor setback will be good in no time. We are finally ready to go. It's time to hit the power on this sucker. Now, everything is effectively plugged in via this sort of uh, the plug socket down here. We just hook that up like that. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yep, turns a little bit red. Everything is fine. Eh, batteries start to chug a bit. This pipe is blocked. Why is the pipe blocked? Oh, there we go. Much better. Now I'll start pumping that water. That water will go onto our cooling loop down here. Oh my god, it's so slow. But it will go into this cooling loop. It'll get circulated around. We're going to set this to, if the temperature is 25, below 25. This here is going to be our insulator between these sections, which reminds me, we should brick that in. And brick that in. And hopefully no duplicates get stuck in there. Uh, as for water, we have not hooked up the water yet. We don't want any oxygen going through here until this system is prepped. Once that is, then we'll start worrying about doing this in here. Oh, how are these gas pumps? They are... Mm, okay, settings were lost. If this is above 450... Yep. So let's start stripping these out. All of the uh, the gas in here will actually just go straight into these gas vents. We stuck a bunch of gas vents on here. Oh, one second. Much better. Uh, what we've what we've done here is we've got some high pressure gas vents, and all of the all of this gunk that's going to come out of here is immediately going to get dumped off. These are all severed. You'll see they're severed right there, so it'll just dump them out into those high pressure gas vents. Later we'll replace those with regular gas vents, but for the time being that'll help strip that out. And how is that looking? Right, we need more polluted water in there. Should have known. We will enable auto bottling. We'll put that up to a level six. Hopefully we'll get some more water. You know what? We'll uh, we'll copy that over. Oop. <laughs> The game just keeps wigging out on me. But we're so close. With uh, the four we've got in rockets, that's 117. That means, what, three more brings up to 20. So 24 more to go. Only 24. That is so achievable. We are so close. I right, just, just got to finish this. While we wait for our polluted water to show up, I think we're going to hook this up. Let's see. Excellent. That should start draining the water, excess water out of the system. That is all coming across from over here. So this liquid pump over here is giving us all of that. And yes, we have a bunch of excess water being dumped over there. <laughs> How's our system over here looking? We have uh, set the top gas pumps to not activate until we've got ourselves some decent gas pressure, and the bottom ones should be fine. Right. What's going on here? Why aren't you uh, spitting out as much oxygen as we need? This, this could take a minute. This is actually just taking too long, so I'm going to set those top ones to 250, bottom ones to 450. That will even out after a while. I'm not going to worry about it too much. We're currently venting all that, that excess waste in, outside the base, so it doesn't really make a difference. Forgot to put in the aeropots. We'll put those in now. That'll give us great hole. Great hole. Perfect. Now, what is left? Uh, no, that's done. So we just have to fill this up. Once the oxygen gets sorted and we get the suits filled in, we can just start bringing people in here and leaving them there. I think I think even before the suits get filled up, we'll just move people in. Though we might want to fill up the fridge first. I'm thinking that needs a bunch of barbecue in it before we let them uh, loose. They're going to need at least 100 kilos of barbecue to keep them going. How much do we have over here? Probably not so much. That's 10 kilos there and another... One ton. We have one ton of barbecue. You know what? I think... I think they can have uh, as much barbecue as they would like. Quick dose of bleach stone to get this all up and running in chlorine environment. Uh, after that, we'll probably throw in a bunch more barbecue. It's going to be a while before they're self-sufficient at barbecue. They only have 25 eggs in there already. They're going to need another, what, 50, 55 before we're even going to consider that done. As well as that, we've eaten through our reserves of regolith. So our, um, our shovels up here are not going to be quite as uh, productive as they once were. We're going to need more regolith, and unfortunately, we've harvested pretty much all of it. And uh, extending it is not really an option. Oh, cargo has come back. One second. We'll open the door and launch this for another one. This has been set up to go to the planet that's going to bring us back. Ah, here we are. Isoresin and fullerene. So we're getting super coolant, and we're getting isoresin out of it, so we can do some uh, viscogel liquid locks at a later date. Also, this needs some more work. We need to start injecting steam in here. 
though it's not the worst. What are we looking at? We got about a kilo of pressure out there, which is about what we were expecting. And down here, you can see we're pulling out about a kilo, kilo and a half of water. So once once we get the other four steam rockets back online or online, that should go up drastically. We just got to get this finished, of course, which so close still, so close. It is now well, not quite fully functional, but we've got all the oxygen flowing, so that's going into the suits. Um, why is that not burning off? Oh, we've got it plugged into the mains. What's that battery set to? Oh, a little bit better. The, the great thing about this, though, is once the the hydrogen backs up in the system the whole way, this will automatically just burn it off anyway, so it's not like we're going to waste any of the hydrogen. It will be turned into power and dumped onto our main grid. At the same time, water is all flowing from down here. Well, toilets are recycled. All the water is flowing from over here in this tank, and we're pumping all the water up from the bottom of the map to go into this system. Now, we can't put anyone in here until we've got these suits full. Until the suits are full, there's no point actually moving everyone in. It will just be a pain in the butt. So, in the meantime, we need to get some uh, construction projects finished. One is over here. You notice here that there's water collecting here. It's just, it's a temperature problem. You notice the gas pumps are uh, at only 70 C or so. It's just by the time the gas gets to them, it, there's just not enough heat left in it, or there's so little gas it doesn't actually cause any temperature change, and we're left with these little blobs of water. So, we are going to use some high-pressure gas vents right here above them and pump in a bunch of hot steam just to heat up this whole area. We have almost finished this out, but unfortunately, more printables. <laughs> and the luck is not with us. Both of these are mouth breathers. So it looks like we're taking on our first mouth breather of the entire season, uh, entire series so far. So say hello to Arthur Refinus. Arthur Refinus will be duplicate number 118. Oh, wow. Hey, what, we managed to get to 118 without having to pick up a mouth breather. That's pretty good. Sorry, Arthur. I, I wish we could have got you a better dupe, but it's just the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, that should be sucking in enough gas to start heating up everything in there. Once the gas pumps get to 100 plus degrees, it should stop all of this uh, water from collecting there, which is just messing up the works. In the background now, we just want to get rid of a little bit of uh, well, micromanagement. What I'm trying to do is heat up these gas pumps in these areas just to make sure that they don't ever collect any water again. I want them about 130 to 150. Yeah, they're close enough. We'll, we'll disconnect them in a minute. But where is it? I right, stand the bottom of the map. We've started uh, encountering the chlorine and the sour gas. Now, we'll only encounter these once. Once we get rid of those, we shouldn't have to worry about them again. Well, uh, there's a big mass of sour gas. After that, it'll only be carbon dioxide that leaks in from meteors that we'll have to worry about. So I've just turned on the signal switcher and we are going to start siphoning all of that chlorine, carbon dioxide, sour gas, all of this stuff at the bottom of the silo. We'll get rid of it using this manual switch. Once it's all gone, we'll have to rec remember to turn it back off again. Otherwise, we're going to start siphoning out the steam, and we'd rather not do that. Steam pressure down here is... Wait, 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 let's get above this sour gas cloud because it's a bit of a mess. It's about 20 kilos, and that's only with two rockets. Once we start getting those other four up and running, things are going to get an awful lot more pressurized in here. Also, we've got to keep scraping out the sides of the chimneys. That, I think, will be the next step. We'll be scraping out the chimney sides. So, uh... Let's, uh, let's just finish this off. This whole place looks like it's stabilized. It'll take care of itself, hopefully. Uh, that leaves the bottom of the map, which, yep, that's also being taken care of. We're sucking out all of the carbon dioxide and chlorine down there, just fine. And then we've got this. I have went through all of the door, door, door permissions and I have set 48 duplicates, the next 48, and they are all allowed access to this area. So everyone from your boy all the way down, all the way, all the way, <laughs> keep going, and boom. Now these last two don't uh, have exosuit training, but they will hopefully soon enough. But everyone else does have exosuit training, so we can just let them in here and let them run wild. First though, we need to get some Atmo docks. Should not be an issue. And then once we've got the Atmo docks up and running, we're going to delete the beds uh, outside the base. And once the beds outside the base are deleted, well, that means everyone in, well, everyone will get their beds reset. We'll also delete the dining tables as well. That does mean everyone out here will have nowhere to sleep and nowhere to dine. I'm not going to worry about it too much. We'll have a little bit of stress for a day or two, but then we'll get rid of it by um, replacing the beds and dining chairs. And where is all this water coming from? This, ah, this is probably because of all the ice we managed to uh, dig up. Where is it? Come on. It probably fell down here. Yep, there we go. Yeah, nope. We got rid of that as well down there, and I think we got a lot of it. Yeah. 
Let's move everyone in here and delete everything we need. Once we have deleted all the beds and dining area, I think we'll be uh, good to go. I think we're actually going to move some of these beds over this side as well, because we will be putting in a third micro base over here as well. So you know what? Let's do the, the bed moving while we're at it. All right, this is a new bug on me. I've never seen it before, but they're, they're sleep eating. Yep, they're asleep, but they're eating. I, I don't know. <laughs> is their calories going up? No, 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 it's just... They're eating in their sleep. They're sleep dreaming. Eating. <laughs> uh, good job, Odin and Tim. Eat something new every day. Uh, um, we've deleted all of the beds, all of the dining areas. I'm going to throw in an extra few beds and stuff down here just to make sure we have a little bit of extra space. Mushrooms wise, we're actually up to 8 million calories of mushrooms. So it's going pretty well. And barbecue wise, this is starting to come online. So our barbecue started to go up again. But once everyone's moved up, once all the beds and all the dining areas are active, we'll start replacing the beds and everything down below. But for the time being, it's just a case of waiting and seeing. All the beds are now occupied. It, it, took, a, it took a cycle or two. Okay, we, we wasted some time. But now every single bed in this place is occupied. The mess table is not quite so much. So we're going to have to leave, uh, not rebuild the mess tables outside of here for just a little bit longer. But we can start putting beds back in so they can at least have somewhere to sleep as opposed to sleeping on the ground. Right, well, that is all ongoing. All the doors around the map that lead to, say, the space biome or into the rocket chimney have all been updated with uh, access protocols. Now everyone in both the mini bases can access them. And why does that look? Oh no, they're perfectly level. We just about managed to squeeze that in there below the neutronium. It's a little bit cramped in that bedroom, but you know what? So long as they're getting the bonus, who cares? That means we now have what, 80, 96 people who can now access the rocket chimney and the oil biome, so maybe we'll finally get that oil biome swept. Speaking of which, most of the oil is gone. We've actually managed to drain most of the oil. We've drained all the crude oil from this side. This side is, well, it's going down rapidly, and this is all of the petroleum we've made out of it. So power-wise, we're good whenever we need it. Uh, coal, we've got 744 tons. We're actually down about 50 on our high point. Uh, over here, you know what, we'll turn this off for a minute, I think. Yeah, we don't want any of that steam getting sucked out. We probably already have sucked out a bit of it, and that's going to damage some of the pipes at some point. You just know it. Okay, I think next bet, we're going to skill scrub some of the people in the new um, the new mini base, and we're going to get them into rockets. I want six rockets running continuously to the closest planets to provide us with more steam. Yeah, the, the game is, is really starting to bug out. It, this is now the, uh, the dupes eating behind the toilet. Behind the toilet eating. I... I okay, that... Right, that I have no idea what the hell just happened there. But yeah, game definitely not being as stable as it used to be. <laughs> it's okay though, we've got, what, 18, 118 down, 23 more to go. Only 23 more. Game can handle it. We are currently skill scrubbing one of our four upcoming astronauts, but another duplicate has arrived. So say hello to our newest duplicate slash patron. That would be Brandon H. They will be getting probably straight into gophering. There's uh, not a lot of uh, rocketry going on after this. We're going to, well, once we have those six rockets going, it'll be that and the rockets on the top of the map. But we're out of time. In fact, we've been out of time for a while. But we do have a few projects I want to get done. Namely, finish launching these. I've got four people or, yeah, three people loaded up and a fourth one ready to go. We'll launch them at the start of the next episode. I also want to continue scraping at the edges of the silo just so we have a little bit more room. Namely because I just want to run a fire pole the entire length of this. Just for transport reasons, and also I think it would look incredibly cool to have a fire pole the entire length of the map going from the top to the bottom. I, I don't know, it's just one of those little side pet projects. At the same time, we eventually are just going to get around to putting in the solar in there. I want to fill this area up with solar just so we have something to supplement our power, namely because our power needs are getting a little bit hectic now. Though I really do like to look at those two little micro bases stuck together. That is, that is just beautiful. The symmetry, everything's perfect. Though... Ooh, yeah, we've only got 34 volts in there. We need 76 to be self-sustained, assuming perfect numbers. But yeah, we're going to need about 90 total. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll cut it out there. I'm already miles over budget. I uh, hope you enjoyed and uh, good luck.